I'm Marianne Simpson here, director of Apex Media, and I'm at London Heathrow Airport, ready to fly with Finnair to Helsinki to attend Slush. Slush is a tech startup sort of venture capital conference, but it's not like any conference you've ever seen. It's kind of like a festival and a circus and a conference all in one. I'd like to say a big thank you as well to our sponsors, West Entertainment, uh, for helping to make this possible, and Finnair. Why is Apex going to slush? Well, I think a lot of us in the industry have noticed it's already happening and in the future it's going to become even more prevalent that the changes to our industry are not coming from within the industry, they're coming from outside the industry. And the tech world, Silicon Valley, the startup community is becoming a major source of innovation and challenge for us all. So Apex is going to slush this week and we're going there to find out what's new, what's relevant for our membership and bring you back that information. Next up, Slush. It's the world's leading startup event. Uh, 20,000 people from 130 countries, 2,500 startups and 1,500 investors. And the thing that makes it special is, well, firstly, if you just look around, this is, some people call it Burning Man Met Ted. So there's this very, 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 very unique atmosphere. There's a lot of energy in the air, and the venue is designed for, like, alternative reality kind of experience. Don't let the surreal backdrop of this student-run event fool you, though. There's nothing trivial about what's happening in this scene. Finnair is one of the world's best digital airlines, and they've been involved in slush since early days. I've caught up with Juha Järvinen, who is the chief commercial officer at Finnair, and he's also the vice president of the Airline Passenger Experience Board of Directors. Juha, why is Finnair involved in Slush? There's every possible reason to be here. I mean, this is really one of the biggest uh, tech events in, in the world, actually, one, one of the biggest in Europe. It's been now running for 10 years in a row, and it's actually getting bigger and bigger every year. And of course, it's great to get now up to 20,000 people this year to the tech event. And of course, they're mainly flying with Finnair. So of course, it's a great opportunity for us to introduce our product, but also get to know the companies and see how we can actually further learn and develop products together. So what kind of stuff are you doing here this week? What are you looking for? What sort of meetings are you hoping to have? I think a big thing that we see is the virtual reality and augmented reality. I think that's something that we really want to look into. Then we have facial recognition. Uh, we did a quite big test last summer. We're also actually presenting the case, what we did last summer, so that's also innovation. And in cargo logistics, we're also doing a new control system that we, we're actually introducing to other, other companies as well. Payments, payment platforms is something that we're looking into, and also then the in-flight experience area, which of course is important for all the Apex carriers. Uh, so looking at what could be done in the in-flight environment uh, using technology, entertainment systems. And there's a lot of Asian, Asian uh, entrepreneurs and, and investors here. So you, you never know, maybe they invest in us. Reactor Ventures is one of Helsinki's most desirable venture capital funds for tech entrepreneurs looking to grow their businesses. We like to invest in what we feel we understand. We look really at, at the team. Well, of course, there has to be a big enough opportunity. There has to be an interesting change in the tech landscape. But first and foremost, there has to be a really good cross-disciplinary team that uh, is basically world-class in what they do and, and, and their talent has to be really relevant to, to the opportunity at hand. We spoke to several startups that have already got some traction in the airline world. Hi, I'm Sid and I'm from a company called BizPay and we're here with Airbus BizLab. Uh, Airbus BizLab, the accelerator part of Airbus. Um, so BizPay offers installment finance to consumers for airline tickets. We'll integrate directly onto the checkout flow of the airline and we'll represent a new option to consumers so they don't have to pay everything now, they won't have to take a loan and they won't have to take a credit card debt in order to pay for an airline ticket over a period of time before they fly. We're at Slush today to try and meet airlines, to meet investors. We have a couple of airlines we're speaking to right now, but we're really interested to try and get into the Nordic regions and to try and speak to people like Finnair, SAS, and other players in the market. My name is Kaspar Lastikka and here's Jonas Suoranta, and we are Ultimate AI. And basically what we do, we try to automate the most frequently asked questions from the chat-based customer service by using deep learning AI. The suggestion it creates value right away, but it, it gives time for the company to really adapt the AI and, and train it by themselves. 
And we met several others who haven't targeted passenger experience just yet, but whose solutions have obvious applications or could be integrated given the right partnerships and optimization. Our company is Totem. We advance safer travel by keeping travelers and hotels safe from bed bugs. And the way we do it is with a smart new IoT technology. Our product is actually a set of smart bed legs that you replace your current bed legs with, and you just press them on. If any bed bugs are introduced in the room, uh, the legs attract, trap, and detect them, and then send a notification to the housekeeping staff of the hotel, and they can just resolve the problem for themselves before it becomes a real problem. Our startup originated from research done at the University of Helsinki. Um, we did research on uh, algorithms to detect movement based on raw accelerometer data from phones and devices that have this information and can provide it to us. And now this information is being commercialized and we can hopefully provide this as a good service for all kinds of applications from smart cities, smart mobility, to improving the user's experience with, with apps and other applications. It really provides a very versatile use case. So Yoti, just once you basically voluntarily choose to use your photo ID and your smartphone, both unique to you, with your biometric face to basically tie your photo ID information to yourself. And then you can share that information, your age or your 18 plus, or your name verified to passport or another photo ID uh, with any business that you want or peer to peer with somebody you might want to check out before you pay them on a classified site. Most people want better control of their data, but they don't want it to be really difficult to do. And We've just finished our beta. We had about 90,000 installs in the beta. Uh, last month we had 45,000 installs and this month we're on track for about 60,000 installs in November. So uh, lots of people would like to own their digital identity, we're really sure of that. In-flight entertainment is certainly one of the low-hanging fruit use cases where you know, people, someone sitting in a middle seat for 10 hours is, is very open to the idea of feeling magically transported. One of the sort of um, arguments against VR in the aircraft is that the headset is really clunky and it doesn't enable you to see your food or to yeah. see when the in-flight service is coming. There are a lot of companies um, that are working on headsets that are always transfer, that are like augmented reality, which um, certainly is probably the holy grail. Liviu Babbitts is from Cyborg Nest, a company that has developed a new sense for the human race. North Sense is a first in many respects, and a great example of how the biotech sector, medical implants, and elective biological upgrades will be changing the typical traveler profiles sooner than we think. My name is Livio, and I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Cyborg Nest. We create new senses for humans, like the one that I have here. Uh, this thing is the North Sense, and it connects me to the Earth magnetic field, so each time that I face north, I get a little vibration. And that little gesture starts to embed into memories, into the little maps in my brain and the way that I see reality. It's just the tip of the iceberg at these days, but uh, things are moving very, very fast. And I think in very few short years, we will see very different humans on the street than we were used to. I travel a lot, so obviously I travel with the North Sense. And I must say that in some ways I'm, I'm even worried from the lack of interest from the security people that they have in it because I'm crossing borders and security checks with a computer on my chest and most of the cases nobody pays attention to it. Flush draws a robust turnout from the automotive sector and other mobility providers. And of course, Silicon Valley and other big tech multinationals have a footprint that's pretty hard to miss. We spotted Apex members Nokia and Google, plus Microsoft, IBM, Apple, Siemens, and many others. Most of these firms held open pitch competitions on their booths, looking to get an edge by unearthing new tech and recruiting promising entrepreneurs. The official theme of this year's event was a call for solvers, focusing heavily on social responsibility and environmental stewardship in the tech world. But mobility, media, and the sharing economy were also core topics. Organizers even worked with one London-based startup called Fly Victor to charter a slush-branded luxury jet that would deliver Silicon Valley's tech royalty to the event in style. So basically, Fly Victor, we're a facilitator of private jets. We're an online booking platform, so we're connecting the, the flyers to the operators across Europe and across the world. Um, in regards to the shared model, 
the popularity of it is growing, as we saw kind of on the slush flight. And I do think um, we'll see more of it going forward with similar companies across Europe and in the US. Um, I definitely think it's an interesting space to watch and one, there'll be a lot of development for sure. Mobility space is super fascinating in the next 10 years because it's going through so many shifts at once. So traditionally, European companies have been very strong like uh, Mercedes and Audi, but now all of this is going electric. So that's one of the first, sh first uh, shifts. Secondly, there's on demand. So people are not there more buying cars, but ordering them from platforms like us. And thirdly, of course, autonomous cars, which are completely shifting the whole industry around. So these three big trends happening at once will, will just shift the industry in the next decade. Apex met with Brian Wong, a speaker at the event and an astonishingly successful 26-year-old tech entrepreneur from Vancouver. He actually got the idea for his company Keep, which improves digital advertising engagement through gamification and rewards while flying on a plane. He had a clear message for the airline community. I'm confident as a techie that technology is already solved in terms of this challenge is more the, the mindsets of management and also them realizing that there is a new generation of flyer and they're going to come in a huge wave. Like right now we still have business travelers that are of a certain age group, but you think about age group like mine, like I'm talking mid twenties, late twenties, there's going to be even more of us flying and that group doesn't care about a lot of the things that the other group before us did. And they need to be very, very conscious of that or else they will be very bitten. I'm waiting for a digital first airline. With millennials having surpassed baby boomers as the largest living generation, and with the even more digitally immersed Gen Z not far behind, it's safe to say Wong is far from alone in his desire to see more tech-friendly travel options. On behalf of the Apex Association and Apex Media, we'd like to thank our supporters for this video and this trip, Finair and West Entertainment. So until next time, Apex Investigates, I'm your host, Marianne Simpson.